like I said uh, in my previous video, I think it is a good idea to try and assemble the car to condition in which it is drivable so we can put it on the road and test drive the transmission, the overdrive, the clutch and uh, the engine of course. I, the engine I know that it's running well because we run it a couple of times, we measure the compression and everything so I know the engine is good but the transmission, the overdrive and the clutch, no idea. So better do that now, right? So I think first I'm gonna wire the starter because it's down there deep and um, I don't want to do all the wiring because that means all the gauges and everything but I think I'm gonna do enough just for the car to start so not really sure how am I gonna do that but we're gonna figure it out on the way and we're gonna install the, the intake manifold and the carburetors all the hoses, the radiator, the alternator and uh, we're gonna bleed the brakes etc etc but I don't know if that's gonna happen in one video but at least that's the direction that we're going in so let's get started all right so now like a real uh, youtuber I'm gonna do uh, instead of screen capture I'm gonna do a shot of my screen <laughs> But really, I don't have time for uh, things like that, so I'm, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to uh, look at my screen here directly. So, uh, for the wiring, I have the Heines or Haynes, Haynes manual, I have this manual, and I have all the wiring diagrams inside and everything that I need, but everything is black and white. And honestly, I'm too old to do that. So in um, online, I found on this website, I'm gonna put the link in the description, but I'm also gonna tell you www.advanceoutowire.com uh, slash TR2506, that's for TR250 and for TR6 PDF. And um, here you can find the wiring diagrams for TR250, for TR6 from 69, 70 to 71, 72 and 73 etc etc so this is the one that i need the one at 73 and uh, i even managed to download that and here it is um, i have it on my screen now and it is with colors and you can see the wiring colors and it's much easier to work off this the only problem is now that i have to walk back and forth from the car to my uh, desk which is not that far away anyways so uh, what we want to start with is the starter, right? So here's our battery and from the battery cable you see we have a, this uh, little hub here that supplies power to many uh, places. So uh, all the brown wires that I have around are going into this hub. One of them goes to the ignition switch and then it goes to, I don't know what, to the fuse box and from the ignition switch it splits to two terminals and from there it goes somewhere else and blah 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 but uh, also two of the brown wires go to the alternator and another one goes to the headlights switch so all the brown wires that are there by the battery are to be uh, connected to this hub uh, of course the main power goes to the power terminal of the starter and there is a white with yellow wire that goes to the starter the other end goes to the ignition coil and a white and red wire which goes to the ignition switch and that's the trigger to click the solenoid so uh, it's pretty easy so far let's go and do that on the car and here it is what it looks like in reality this is the main battery cable from the positive terminal on the battery to the starter down there and these are all the brown wires that we're talking about and the white with yellow and white with red so uh, I just cleaned this one and what I didn't do on the headlights and uh, somebody reminded me and I'm gonna start doing that now everywhere and even on the headlights I'm gonna redo it 
I'm going to start putting dielectrical grease on uh, old terminals. So I'm just going to put this little hub, so that's the hub, obviously. I'm going to put the electrical grease here inside. And here I have the electrical grease from Wurt. I have many products from Wurt that are really good. But again, Wurt are not paying me, so this is not an advertisement. But I really like their products anyway. So I think it's about time for them to start paying me. <laughs> okay, and this goes through here. And there's a little clip that goes over there, which we'll have to add. I'm gonna find a clip later, and I'm gonna add it. And now we can just plug those. Also, there's a little earth trap here that needs to go to earth. And here we have a little tub, which is all painted. So I'm gonna clean this now. Of course, again, dielectrical grease prevents oxidizing and helps for a better contact. And now we should connect those under. Again, we're going to put dielectrical grease here. I shouldn't repeat that all the time, should I? And the two little terminals are at the back, uh, one on top of the other. Okay, so the one, the white and yellow goes on the bottom. And of course, the one on the top, the top takes the white and red. And now we can put a clip here to hold them, the two wires, and keep them away from other things that are here, for example, the gas pedal shaft. Oh. So that should keep them away from everything else. Oh, my light is flickering. This is a beautiful light that I got from Eugene. He gave it to me and actually he gave one to Chef Tash as well. It's a beautiful light, I love it. It's very bright, but it's flickering, so it is about time to charge it. Thank you, Eugene. You're like uh, the sponsor of my channel, you know? You supply all the tools. <laughs> By the way, Eugene is repairing air tools, all kinds of air tools, so if you are in Toronto or in the area and you need tools to be repaired, he can repair them for you at home, and he doesn't charge too much. <laughs> I was gonna install the intake manifold with the carbs now, but uh, I realized also that this, uh, these hoses here are going to get buried here. I'd better do these two hoses before I do anything else. This one is going inside for the heater core and the return from the heater core is coming back here. So uh, I need to install this adapter on the wall, on the firewall here, on the bulkhead or whatever it is. And you see how one of these is uh, bent a little. That this one goes on top and I'll show you later why. So the bent one goes on top, they go there. So now we have to figure out which hose goes where. Alright, so we have a the green hoses set here based on the length I think the two longest ones are the ones for the heater inside so we'll see now i think this one is for the manifold right so this one is out of the way this one is for the front of the manifold and i don't know if you see here see this one matches this one so this is the replacement for here so these two are clear so these two here are the ones that we need. Maybe this one is like that. Yeah. 
and this one like that. Does this look right for you to you? Or no, maybe this one actually like that and like that. Okay, that makes more, more sense to me because this gets it out of the way of the battery here. I'm gonna go with that. And we're gonna take this one out and we're gonna put the small one in. We're gonna put all the clamps and then we can install the, the intake and the carbs. All right, so all, all green hoses here are changed, clamps are installed, so we are ready now for the manifold. Here I changed the threads before, like maybe a month ago, so now it is nice and easy to take all the nuts out in and out. And the curbs have been rebuilt maybe 18 months ago at least. So let's see how well have they been preserved for all this time. Yeah, they are dusty, but nice and clean. All right, all six uh, footballs are in place and the nuts are tight. So now we're gonna just finish those hoses. Surprisingly, they fit, huh? As if they are made for here. All right. And before we forget, we're gonna jump inside and hook up the other side of these hoses to the heater inside because what's gonna what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get so excited to start the car that I'm gonna forget that these are open on the other side and the water is just gonna start pouring in my feet. So you're looking through the glove box and these are the two ends that we put out and like I told you the one that is a little bent is on top and here we have the other two hoses from the set and in the actually in the green hose set there are two hoses that are black so these are the only ones that are black and they are really weird shape so now we're gonna have to figure out which one goes where so it is the other way around. <coughs> it's big. It looks like this needs to be 180, and then the top one, the, the one that is bent, is going to be actually at the bottom. It's going to be bent this way, and then this is going to fit like that. Tank and tank. I hope you can see now. So it looks like this one goes like that. Yeah. And then this one goes like that. Yep. Okay. So we made the knot. Well, so I was wrong. The bent one, the bent tube needs to be at the bottom. So anyways, now I'm gonna put the clamps and we're gonna go further. All right, this has been done. It was a little tricky to put all the clamps there, but it worked eventually. So now I can go back to the engine bay and finish what we were doing there. Okay, so here now I have to connect the leverage for the gas pedal. That goes like this. And now it clicks here. Okay, but it hits there, so we need to adjust. Here there's adjuster screws for this lever because now the gas pedal hits the floor. Okay. 
this is where the floor needs to be so I'm gonna go so you hold here I'm gonna go put the pedal to the floor can I? no? Oh. okay then I have to find a way to turn the shaft now okay now it is to the floor good okay so now I have a gas pedal except to return it there was a spring somewhere I think between here and I don't know where was the other end that was this spring when we were pulling the engine it stretched a little bit can we shrink it back? yeah, let me try <coughs> perfect it worked Hmm. doesn't have here, it doesn't have anything okay, that's a new spring that I bought for here but of course it's aftermarket and doesn't have the ears at the end come on so I have to make my own ears now oh. there's a plate here, I don't know if you can see it and I think that's where it should be so I'm gonna go hit the pedal, you watch vroom, 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 vroom. Idling a little bit high. So next, what? Uh, this hose for the servo vacuum. It's a little bit cut. I think it can be still used, huh? <laughs> of course not. We have a new one. Unless we have to modify that too. <laughs> I don't know anymore. I'm getting scared now. A little bit too long, so this one has to be cut. I don't know how how does it go this way or this way. I just I just looked at pictures and uh, everybody has it pretty much wherever they want. Some people have it going this way, some people go have it going directly here. So uh, it's pretty much wherever we want it. So I think I'm gonna go between the battery and the engine and come this way, so I'm gonna cut it here and now I can keep pushing it okay, <laughs> that was tricky but it worked okay, I don't have a clamp for the other side though so we're gonna have to figure out something later and it is pretty tight, but still it is good to have a clamp all right, now we can do this, I guess. Yeah, that's how it goes. So I just need to loosen these clumps. surprised how everything fi everything fits as if it was there yesterday you know well, yes it was there but a long time ago All right I think next we should install the alternator and if I remember this spacer where were they going that would be great that's too far forward so needs to be somewhere there so I guess the small spacer goes at the back and the big one at the front Alright, and now finally we can put the belt on. Okay. Alright, and here now, do you remember the two brown wires that we said are coming from the 
hub over there. They're here. Both of them are going on the alternator. Okay, then this one, the green one, is the temperature sensor. So that goes to the thermostat. Uh, the white and yellow, remember that was coming from uh, the starter according to our schematic so that goes to the positive side of the ignition coil and there's this brown which I'm not really sure what is it hmm. just brown I don't know brown should be power right because there's brown and yellow here and this one is the warning light on the dash but what's the brown for? I don't know and I just checked on the old harness we still have it this brown so I don't know I'm gonna leave it hanging for now I'm guessing that it is coming here and the positive on the ignition coil but I can't be sure so I'm gonna leave it alone for now and we'll see later yeah, I just finished all this wiring here you remember where I was missing bullets and uh, connectors so with the kit that I bought I finished it there are, now there are only these two wires for the horn and on the other side for the horn and for the anti-run on valve I guess but these I'm gonna connect later whatever we're gonna connect so now we can drop in our brand new radiator okay and now this should sit here yeah perfect okay all right so now we have this pipe here from oops sorry about that from the bottom of the radiator where it gets connected with a straight line oops everything is falling down and here we have this uh, angled hose so this goes like that underneath on that pipe and I guess we have to do that now and this I think I'm gonna have to go under the car and do it from there because we also need to put the clamp there Okay, it's in. Ah. All right, and now I can do the top one. Perfect. And here we hit a small problem. This radiator hose is missing somehow from the kit. I just spent about 10 minutes looking around in all boxes and stuff. If it got misplaced somehow, but no, I don't have it. Hmm. This is the last one. Hmm. Anyway, so I wanted to install this one before I complete this video. But it looks like we are done for today. It's really hot these days, guys, in Canada. Yeah, it is June 1st today. And it's normal. In June it's normal to be hot. But it is maybe the last two weeks it was like that. It was, it's crazy. The temperatures are very hot. But that's good. I like it because I can drive uh, my, my Spitfire, which is out of order right now. But I drive the TR4, which is even better. And, um, yeah. So that's all folks, thanks for watching, commenting and subscribing. See you in my next video. Bye. Bye.